So the main take-home messages from my talk on basic pathology, genetics, anatomy are that it depends very much on your viewpoint as to how you define Parkinson's disease. The majority of the people here are thinking of it as a clinical diagnosis, and I would, I would agree with that personally. But of course, genetic factors are very important. The other take-home message is that Parkinson's disease is not just about the motor syndrome, it's about non-motor symptoms, many of which may actually occur uh, and start to develop well before the onset of the motor syndrome. And that's important not just because it helps you in your diagnostic certainty, but it also means that uh, in future we may be able to identify those patients who are at greater risk of going on to develop Parkinson's disease, and that presents numerous opportunities in respect of potentially disease-modifying therapies, neuroprotective therapies uh, that can be used in patients who are uh, identified as being at risk of the disease in future. The other important take-home message is in respect of genetics and genetic testing. Uh, and when patients ask me about whether Parkinson's disease is genetic, the reason they're asking that usually is because they have children or they have relatives who they're concerned about quite naturally. And I think my stock response to that is it's not genetic, but there are certain rare families where Parkinson's can be inherited in a predictable way, but that is the tiny minority. In the vast majority, we now think that there are genetic risk factors, that there are small variations in everybody's genome and everyone's genetic makeup that can influence the risk of Parkinson's disease, but will not determine it per se.